All right, welcome back everybody. Today we are going to talk about productivity and the sacred. What does productivity have to do with the sacred? We are going to see that in a moment, but first we should talk a little bit about the sacred. What is the sacred? Let's start with some definition. Google says that the sacred is connected with God or a God or dedicated to a religious purpose and so deserving veneration. I believe that this definition is not helpful, not helpful at all, especially when coming from a secular perspective or a modern perspective. What does it even mean? What deserves veneration? Let's look for some other, for example, we have regarded with great respect and reverence. Okay, we are getting a bit closer. Let's gather some elements from different definitions. Wikipedia says dedicated or set apart for the service or worship of a deity and the dedicated and set apart element is interesting. So keep that in mind or considered worthy of spiritual respect or devotion or inspiring awe or reverence among believers. It seems that what's important about the sacred is your inner attitude towards it and the way you place it in your life. Another distinction that is important to make is that usually it's people who are holy and places or objects or happenings that are sacred. So the sacred is something that is external to you. So we have gathered a few psychological aspects of the sacred. The sacred is worthy of worship, of respect, of awe and reference. But I think that we can do better. I'm going to propose you a series of images to allow you to connect to what I think really makes the essence of the sacred. Let's start with a graveyard. Why does a graveyard give the feeling of sacredness? You have the feeling that you should not access it for no reason. You have the feeling that you should respect what is around there and that you should not just touch things. A non-religion version of that is a radiation warning. So that gives you the same feeling of, oh, this is dangerous. I should not go inside. What's interesting though about the radiation is that that's part of a technology that can be useful. So there is this little bit of an ambivalence and we are going to see this ambivalence coming up again and again. Uh, let's think of another intuitive example of the sacred. We have Indiana Jones going into the lost temple and there he is almost touching this sacred stone and the interesting thing is on one side we are there and say no no don't touch it don't touch it don't touch it but then on the other side we say actually take it take it take it and again this ambivalence is there and we experience the same thing when we see sleeping beauty hypnotized by the spindle so we look at it and we think no 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 don't do it don't do it but but in some way it's inevitable that she does it we kind of expect that it happens the story doesn't continue if it doesn't happen these feelings are deeply rooted in our biology. Uh, I can give you examples in nature that have something to do with that. So if you encounter a snake, you also freeze and you see that there is something there that you should not touch. And at the same time, you're curious, you're looking at it. You don't let it out of sight. A similar feeling you might get around some fruit that you don't know. Look at that. Don't you get the feeling of, ooh, I don't want to touch that. It, it's in fact a poisonous fruit. But I think the emblematic thing in the world that really defines the sacred is fire. There is something hypnotic about fire. That's why we look at it and we keep looking at it. And, but, but, but why is that? Some people say that you should not play with fire and that's definitely true. But there is a sense in which it is true that we are all descending from that original human being that was so hypnotized by the fire that started playing with it and survived to tell the tale. And this is what defines us in a sense. We are the animal that is at the same time prey and predator. And this being simultaneously prey and predator is what makes us experience certain thing at the same time as promise and threats. So it's this ambivalence of the unknown that characterizes the sacred. Let's make a drawing. So imagine that on one hand we, you have that which can be potentially useful and then on the other hand you have that which key, can be potentially harmful. Down here you have that which is mundane. As you go up this line you encounter things that need a certain kind of expertise. But then up here in the top where you have the things that are potentially most useful and most harmful, you encounter the realm of the sacred. So the sacred really is that which can save you or damn you. It's this 
ultimately ambivalent. Now let's talk about productivity. What does this have to do with productivity? So if you are being improductive in some way, what this means is that you are misallocating your energy. There is something that is valuable to you that you want to do or achieve. And for some reason, you're not putting the energy, the attention, the effort that you should put into it. And that energy is going somewhere, somewhere else. And the question is why? What, what is that thing that is taking your energy? For now, I'm going to take just one potential item, which is your smartphone. Your smartphone is modern day fire. Your smartphone is that thing that we still don't know how to deal with, that has enormous power, but can also be potentially destructive to your life. And so the question is, what is the right approach towards it? As we have understood about the sacred, it's not about repressing it. It's not about eliminating it from your life because it has this ambivalence. It can be extremely useful. These kinds of technologies cannot be ignored. If we think about a, a parallel, a kitchen knife is something that you don't just give to a child. And so to the child, the kitchen knife should rightfully be sacred, something that you don't touch, something that is not intrinsically bad, but that could be very harmful if you don't know how to handle it. And I would argue that we as a society don't know how to deal with smartphones. And so in my opinion, the solution is to increase the sacredness of smartphones to look at them as something that is sacred perhaps not the most sacred objects that we can find in life but pretty high up there another question is how do we deal with sacred things we have had some hints in the examples before the answer is we stop engaging and then we look at it carefully we pay attention we look at how it behaves and then maybe when we find the courage we poke it and then we look at how it behaves again and as we learn to see how it works we start to build boundaries around it and boundaries can be boundaries of time boundaries of space and boundaries of mindset meaning before you use that tool you need to make sure that you enter a certain type of mindset you need to be present for example and then once we have established what the boundaries are we build rituals that enforce those boundaries. Things that we do before we engage with the sacred object and we do after we are done engaging with the sacred object. And finally, what we do is we craft stories that enforce those rituals. In this context, a story tells what happened to the people who didn't follow those rituals. And then what happened to the one rare person who did follow those rituals. And so perhaps if we want to gain a healthy relationship to our smartphone, we should try to do that. We should try to make sacred objects out of them. Meaning we should ask ourselves, what are healthy boundaries? What is the right space? What is the right time? What is the right mindset with which to interact with the smartphone? And then what are the rituals that you need to, be, to ensure that you will use that object within the right context? And then finally, what are the stories? What are the stories that can provide the motivational force to follow those rituals? What really happens to people who don't follow those rituals? And what happens to people who actually do follow them? Today I don't have a concrete answer, but I think this is the right framework to approach modern day addiction to extremely powerful technology that doesn't allow us to be productive. And beyond that, that doesn't allow us to be present and tend to the things we really value. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and see you next time.